We already know that our protein needs include a requirement for quantity, which is how many total grams of protein we need to eat, but also a requirement for quality, which means we want to make sure that we get enough of all the essential amino acids in the right proportions. Another parameter to be considered is the bioavailability of the proteins from a particular source. Basically, how much of that protein is digested and absorbed. This largely depends on inter-individual variability. Stomach acidity, enzymatic activity, carriers, and the co-presence of some minerals and vitamins. But it also depends on how foods are associated. As you can easily understand, if we eat a yogurt alone, we will absorb more of its proteins than if we eat it together with a high-fiber meal. In some foods, the presence of inhibitors of proteolytic enzymes can decrease protein's availability. Cooking also has an effect. In general, cooking increases protein availability from most food, both animal and vegetables, because it starts denaturation, it softens tissues, and may even inactivate inhibitors. On the other hand, excessive exposure to high temperatures or extending cooking times can degrade proteins and create toxic compounds. As a general rule of thumb, however, proteins from animal sources are absorbed for over 90%, while absorption from vegetable sources ranges between 70 and 90%. So how much protein do we need? We already know that our protein turnover is very high, about 250 grams per day. But that doesn't mean we have to get all of those proteins from food because most amino acids from protein breakdown are recycled, so protein dietary needs are much lower than protein turnover. So we cannot use protein turnover to determine how much protein we need to eat, and the way we do it instead is we just want to match the protein we lose with the protein we eat. We want to make sure that the amount of protein we lose or catabolize we bring back in, so that we maintain nitrogen balance. How do we lose protein? Our primary route of excretion is the urine. Careful, we do not normally excrete protein themselves in the urine, but we excrete the catabolic products of protein metabolism, such as urea. By quantifying nitrogen in the urine, we can back calculate how many grams of proteins were broken down to get that amount of urinary nitrogen. And then on top of that, we also lose some proteins directly with our feces, skin, hair, nails, sperm, although for a healthy person, that's normally a very small amount. So based on this calculation, which is not easy by the way, but we're not discussing this here, we find out that our protein requirement is generally low, but also highly variable. The average adult needs 0.5 grams of proteins per kilogram of body weight per day. But since most people are not average, some individuals have needs as low as 0.2 grams per kilo per day, and some others have needs as high as 0.8 grams per kilo per day. But because the individual person normally doesn't know if he needs 0.2, 0.5, or 0.8, and because protein is so important, and it is considered that it's much better to have more than you need rather than having less, the recommended daily allowance for protein is 0.8 grams per kilo per body weight per day for everyone. In reality, only about 2% of the population really needs 0.8 grams per kilo per day. Everybody else needs less. But not knowing, and to be sure that everybody is covered, we recommend the maximum for everybody. So to have an idea, if we do this calculation for an average 70 kilograms adult, we get 70 times 0.8 equals 56 grams of proteins per day. When we express protein requirement like this, we also want to make sure that energy intake is adequate. So we want to make sure that we get enough carbs and fats for energy use, because otherwise we will have to divert part of that protein for energy production, and then it's not enough anymore. So this recommendation is for an efficient protein utilization. Of course, this calculation is based on a healthy body weight. If you're obese, you don't make this calculation based on your actual weight, because that would overestimate your protein's requirement. An alternative rule of thumb is to express protein needs as percent of total energy intake, and make sure that proteins account for 10 to 35 percent of the total calories, which is the acceptable distribution range set for protein by the DRI guidelines.
There are some situations in which protein needs are increased. Growth is one. Here you need more proteins because you're building new tissues, not just maintaining them. For this reason, infants, adolescents, and pregnant women all have higher than normal protein needs. Another situation is resistance training, such as weight training or bodybuilding. Here you want to build some new muscle, so again you're building new tissue, not just maintaining it, and you will need about 10 to 20 grams of extra proteins for it. Also, if you are ill, injured, or recovering from illness or injury, your protein need will also be higher because you'll have a lot more repairing to do and because you need to build acute phase proteins to fight infections. Stress of illness can dramatically increase protein requirements, and some particularly hypercatabolic states, such as burns or trauma, requires twice if not three times the average need for a healthy individual. Meeting protein requirements with a normal diet is easy, and this is also true for athletes that turn to expensive protein isolates, high-protein bars, and protein shakes. Most of us have already more than covered our protein requirements before we even get to dinner. To get a sense of the amounts of proteins that are provided by regular servings of what we normally eat, I will now make you a few examples of food servings, all providing high-quality proteins. There are 21 to 25 grams of proteins in a 3-ounce serving of meat, poultry, or fish. There are 16 grams of proteins in 2 eggs. There are 11 grams of protein in a 6 ounces container of plain yogurt. There are 14 grams of proteins in a 3-ounce serving of tofu. A serving of brown rice with lentils will provide 19 grams of highly quality proteins. A slice of whole wheat bread with 3 tablespoons of chickpeas hummus provides 8 grams of high quality proteins. There are 3 grams of proteins in 5 walnuts. There are 4 grams of proteins in a tablespoon of peanut butter. If we put 2 tablespoons of peanut butter on a slice of whole wheat bread, we get 12 grams of proteins. And if we drink an 8 ounces glass of soy milk together with it, which provides 7 more grams of proteins, we get a total of 19 grams of high quality proteins.